All right, before I get started, I just want to make this statement. I am a researcher. I do research. I am not recommending anybody to do anything. I am showing what research is being done. So if this is blocked by YouTube or for any reason by anybody, that's just not right. I am not just somebody making up silly statements. I have been cited in 140 highly cited papers. I have hundreds of, of mentions and I'm, I, I'm doing this as research. So please do not block me. All right, you know, I, I get worried every time I do something, what I'm allowed to say. If I can't talk about research, you know, what can I talk about? How does anything ever get understood or acknowledged? I know there's community guidelines and rules, but I'm not breaking any rules. I'm not doing anything that I shouldn't be doing. I'm talking about research. I should think that that would be the objective of YouTube is to spread at least information. Don't, you know, I'm not saying false information. I'm talking about validated research that I should be allowed to, to discuss. All right, so please. All right, now, this is written by Tim Newman on June 26, 2020. Fact, fact check by Jasmine Collier. Could COVID-19 could gut bacteria be involved? Now, I've been discussing this, not saying do this or do that, but I have been discussing what the research indicates, just as these people are. However, it's been fought against about gut bacteria helping. So these people are afraid to speak up. The authors of a recent paper ask what role gut bacteria might play in COVID-19. They outline strands of existing evidence. There's an avalanche of it and conclude a link between the two is plausible, but that more research is necessary. Because if they come out and say yes, there is a d definite link, they will be destroyed. There is such a f pushback against virtually anything that goes against what the top echelon is saying. Now, scientists implicated gut bacteria in a number of conditions from diabetes to depression. We know it has helped Marguerite's son with autism. We know, I mean, we have so much information about how well it does in the gastrointestinal tract making enzymes. And my statement and my belief now, after seeing this research and doing the research, not just a guess, that bacteria create the enzymes, the enzymes do the chemistry. If you don't have the enzymes, you will not be healthy. That's it. Now, it appears that all the people that are getting these severe lung, you know, uh, infections and heart, too, are, um, you know, they're getting inflamed and then they're actually stiffening up all of the fibers. And then you lose the ability to have the sponginess of the lung and then you, it, it goes downhill from there. And if you cannot turn that around, you will die. You're going to die because the invasive chemistry cannot be dealt with by enzymes because the enzymes aren't there because the bacteria is not there because you probably had some antibiotics that killed it. And if you took the probiotics to overcome what you're missing, that is really what the sign of health is, is to have those bacteria present to fight against these invading bacteria. Now, that's the evidence. This is not me saying go out and take a bunch of this or do any of that. I am just saying this is what they talk about. For instance, gastrointestinal sense is a relatively common feature in COVID. Most people are getting stomach distress of some sort or another, diarrhea, vomiting, and all that. And then they go in and they're finding out these things. Um, another link between the new coronavirus and gut involves ACE2 receptors. These receptors are SARS-CoV-2's entry point into the cells. They're expressed in a few anatomical sites, the lungs and the gastrointestinal tract. Also, researchers detected SARS-CoV-2 in the stool of people with COVID-19. There's so many things that are tuning in together. 
new paper appears in the journal Virus. Authors outline how our microbiome might influence either our risk of developing it or the severity of the disease. It does both. If you, well, I'm not going to say anything about how important the gut bacteria is, but it is important. I'll leave it at that. Although there's no direct evidence, the researchers collate various lines of converging evidence. There is a ton of evidence. The gut-lung axis. Everything is going through your guts. A link between the lungs and the gut seems somewhat unexpected. However, the authors discuss in the paper is not a new idea. So-called gut-lung axis describes crosstalk occurs between gut microbiota and the lungs. You know, I, I don't know how much more I can say about it other than what I have been saying is that the enzymes in the bacteria that are supposed to be resident in your body, they are supposed to be there and we've all been taking antibiotics and the way our diet is and the foods have been altered and all kinds of things have happened that have caused us to have chronic disorders. And what is a chronic disorder? A chronic disorder is something that your body just can't heal. It tries to deal with it, and it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse until you finally die. Now, your body is supposed to do all the, like, look at this. They also note that some studies demonstrate the links between acute respiratory distress, which occurs in severe cases, and gut microbiota. Further to say, they explain that in mice, removal of certain gut bacteria by antibiotics, which we do all the time, leads to increased susceptibility to influenza, virus infection in the lungs. This is the kids get these for their ears, and everybody gets them from root canals and all kinds of things. And then if you don't repopulate your gut with the right microbiome, you are going to not be able to create the enzymes which are the proteins which do the work of chemistry, and they do it so elegantly. I'm going to play a couple of clips from some of the recent videos, but please, Facebook or, or YouTube or anybody, you should all be looking at this and saying, let's think about this, because all I ever asked for was a study to say who is taking probiotics and who isn't and who's gotten it and who hasn't and has anybody taken the probiotics after they got it and what was the effect this is all i'm asking for i'm not saying do it so please this is the kind of thing we need but we need some people to step up and say okay we can do this study i don't have the means to do this but we need a database where we can have people just say, because I haven't had not, not one single person, zero, not a single person has reported having COVID that has been taken probiotics. Zero. None. If you have, I want to hear from you. I keep saying this over and over and over and over and over. Once again, I'm not saying take them. I'm not saying don't take them. I'm saying I want to know if, if it has an effect. That's all. This is how you learn. This is research. Right? It's not a game. I want to know if you are on probiotics right now and you, if you've gotten COVID and what was the severity and if you have gotten COVID and then immediately, which I would say immediately take the probiotics, what happened? Did it help? And how severe were your symptoms after that? And if anybody did start taking probiotics, did they end up dying? I'd love to know all these things. This is research. This is where I'm going with this. And this is where it needs to be going. If we could help, wouldn't you want to do that? Wouldn't you want somebody to be discussing this? Rather than to be, don't all talk, don't talk about this. All right, please. All right, let's discuss it. Because I, I'm telling you, Bacteria in your gut is, it's, they, the doctors got everything completely backwards. They always say, oh yeah, this disease causes this type of a problem in your gut. No, the problem in your gut causes that type of disease. That's the case 100% of the time. It never goes back the other way. Not that I can find, not in any of the research I've done, and I have done a hell of a lot of it. 
as much as anybody that I could, you could possibly find. Put them up against me and we'll talk. Because you don't have to be out there walking into the hospital rooms to see this. I can find out way more by digging into other people's research across the board and then having them report to me, having 87,000 people reporting to me, look at this, oh, look at this, wait to see this, ooh, 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 ooh. All day long I get that. I don't think doctors are getting that kind of input back to them. And then people are saying to me, oh, I've been taking antibiotics, or oh, probiotics, I feel fabulous, it's done all, I just got one a few minutes ago. So I just, I, I've been taking it since you recommended. I feel fabulous. I, all my everything has been better. And this was, I think, she's only been a month or two. So again, I didn't recommend she take it. I just say, here's what the research says, and then she decided, and that's what she said. All right, I love you. All right, this is Seeker. Now they are looking at the actual bacteria that's in the immune cells and you'll see that bacteria or there'll be a whole batch of them i'm, I'm gonna just play it and watch microscopic universe within each cell there's a this universe in each cell he's saying now what you're looking at here is an immune cell and there's going to be a bunch of bacteria they're going to show in a second and you'll see it's the factory where it's it's doing its work and this is the cell membrane around it and once it gets its its enzyme made and it does it just like that it squirts it out and does its job and if you don't have the bacteria you're in trouble here goes view of the cellular world see here we go you see that right there that's a bacteria just made that and a bacteria just made a made an enzyme it's going to squirt out here and do whatever it's supposed to do. Now, I believe all of these things are different types of bacteria. And the vagus nerve sends down and says to this particular type of bacteria to create a bunch of enzymes and squirt them out. Now, this may happen to every cell in your body that is this type of cell, which might be a, 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 a cell that is a, attacks invaders. And this particular one is called on because it breaks up the zinc molecule that this invader is is this weak spot. But watch this. This is fa fascinating. Where we can Look at actually it. see immune Done. cells scooping watch, up watch sugars. This. And All of a sudden you're going to see a cell go and, and this is real time. This is actually how fast this is happening. And you're going to see it make a very specific molecule and out it goes. Watch. The ear of a watch. Fish see that? The see how fast it did that? And out it goes. Real time. Boom. Folks. Real time. This is what we need to do. Let's just go back here and look again. What we need to do is see what these different bacterias are. Are they all the same in this cell? I don't think so. And then find out what bacterias are in this cell and what bacterias are in a healthy person versus a non-healthy person and what bacterias are missing in certain types of diseases. We could really limit this down and say, oh, I got the COPD. So, okay, here, just put some, eat a couple of these pills and you're good. Or somehow we have to figure out a way to make them repopulate. This is tough. This, and then there's also a bunch of other things you have to remember about how much bulk you need in your system to sort of keep things from moving too fast or too slow or all of that stuff. This is a, this is a little bit of a dance. But these are the partners we need. If you don't have them, you ain't going to be dancing. That's that. They will save your life within minutes. Everybody should be taking probiotics absolutely right now because if you get hit with the COVID, it is so aggressive that the inflammation that it creates in the lungs literally creates enormous amounts of scar tissue just like that and collagens get converted over to other types of collagens from the really flexible ones to the stiffer ones and then they have to be intubated and then they actually were originally trying to intubate them as actually breaking the blood cells open and they were getting clots in their lungs they still are i think it's all bacteria Right to death's door, if you throw a batch of bacteria in there, you see how fast that works. That was real time. So if they're probiotics and, and they're actually the actual enzymes that this thing's creating, and we know what type of enzymes you need, boom, out the door you go.